Hi, my name is Jacob, and welcome to Kids Court Side. Here we will be talking about the NBA, but especially the Lakers with Drew, Hiram, and Jason. I have a question for you guys. What's one team in the Western Conference that can give the Lakers the run for their money? Like, give the Lakers a challenge? I think maybe Oklahoma City Thunder. And maybe the San Antonio Spurs because those are the two teams that won the furthest in the West Western. Well, that was last year. Yeah, and it, it, it does, this is completely Spurs. different the year. The Spurs are getting a lot older with Tim Duncan and, and Tony Parker, Tony Parker, and they're all getting old. So yeah. that can affect yeah, them this season. Yeah, I, I take back what I said about the Spurs. I think OKC okay, have a really good team. Russell Westbrook, um, even if James Harden left, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant. Kendrick Perkins. Serge Ibaka. Serge Ibaka. How about you, Jacob? The Thunder is a really big challenge for the Lakers. They've always they've always been really competitive. I think the Clippers, they have big men who are athletic, strong, strong fast, fast the, quick, the, like everything. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to have to change mine to the Clippers because they do have a really yeah. young, dominant bench and a really young, dominant star five. Okay, I have another question for you guys. What is the two teams in the East? Like, oh, okay. I mean, and obviously the Celtics, Heat. Maybe? Ma he he and maybe, uh, yeah, Celtics. Or maybe the Pacers because they got. What? No, no I, not I, the Pacers. The Pacers, I, I, dis I disagree. The, the Pacers had a breakout season last year, but I don't okay. know. Two teams besides Green? the Heat. No, not including Heat. Not including Heat. Celtics. The Celtics, the Celtics and the Nets and the Brooklyn Nets. With oh, the Brooklyn Nets. Nets. Darren Williams. With, um, Darren Darren Williams, Williams, Joe Johnson, Brooklyn Lopez. The 76 The 76 Yeah, no. Way. no. They lost no. Iguodala. No way. No. They made you buy them. But he, he has a horrible attitude. And he, he's <laughs> like, like, so like, bad. He, he, like, he, he, he has like no bench behind him and no starting. <laughs> if they stole an Iguodala, they could be an okay pair. But and they could go kind of far, but only buying them, they can't do a lot. Yeah. And also in the Western Conference, other than the Clippers, the Nuggets, yeah. because JaVale McGee, he, he's a little cuckoo, <laughs> a little crazy. <laughs> he can have an attitude, but if he tries really hard, he can be really good. I think the Nuggets have a, a better squad this year, because like the Denver Nuggets were in like the bottom of the standings, but the Lakers were like, Second or third, uh, f third place. Second. Second place. I actually can't believe my eyes that they. That's a good to game seven to a team that was in maybe seventh place. Hi, I'm Hiram. And I'm Jacob. And we're here with Edward Davis. <laughs> what was your career in basketball? Well, my career in basketball started as same as you guys, just hard work. Started when I was young and played through high school and played through college and I played all over the world. I played in France, I played in Turkey, I played in China, and I played in Puerto Rico. Um, and now I'm currently trying to make my way into the NBA. Very cool, and what was your inspiration to play basketball? My father, he started me and my brother off playing basketball, so um, we had a, a dream to become higher and better than each, of, each other and our previous brother, so I guess my family is my inspiration. As a child, did you always want to play for the Lakers, and who was your role model? Well, I grew up in Chicago, so I grew up watching Michael Jordan. So Michael Jordan would be my hero if I wanted to play behind Michael Jordan, who I think Kobe Bryant watched also. So it would be great. What was your proudest moment playing basketball? My proudest moment would be when I was 13 years old and I was playing AAU and I dunked for the first time in a basketball game. <laughs> Very cool. Can you explain how coaches and other people influenced you to strive really hard in basketball? I feel like having good role models within my family really helped me strive to be a good basketball player and having younger cousins and nephews looking up to us, me and my family, um, help me to stay on the right track and make the right decisions. So your family was basically your biggest fan who always helped you? Yeah, I feel like your family is always your biggest fan or the people who look after you, your guardian, if you don't necessarily have a big family. Were you a younger sibling or an older sibling? I'm the youngest sibling. I'm the baby. So did that 
push you harder to beat your older brother? Uh, yes, every day I tried to beat him and beat him, and then finally I beat him one time, and we've been going back and forth since then. <laughs> Has there any games where you play against your brother in high school or college or um, well, any game? He's a little older than me, so we didn't get a chance to play against each other. But now that we've, we're have older, we've played on the same professional team in China. We played together, and that was a great experience for us playing together for the first time. So you and your brother basically work together in our team? Um, for the most part, yeah. I mean, in the off season, we train together real hard. But if we have different teams to go to, then we just go our separate ways. and take what we've done in the off season and go with it. Having your big brother in the locker room, how, how can you express how you felt? Because everybody knew he was your big brother. It makes you feel good. You have somebody that you've known for your whole life that really can make you feel real comfortable or it can either make you feel very uncomfortable. It just depends on your relationship with your brother. And if you have a good one, then I feel like it would only make your game way better. Do you guys look up to basketball players? Yes. Grew up in L.A., always looked up to Kobe, yeah. Shaq, and it was just exciting to watch them play. And my brother and I would go out, do some crazy stuff, <laughs> just do some crazy tricks, and very fun. Thank you very Thank you. much. For... Glad to be on the show, Glenn. Thanks for having me, guys. It was wonderful. Thank you for coming. Thank you. For his eight all-star appearances and two league MVP awards, Steve Nash was just a kid, growing up in the hockey place country of Canada. Born February 7, 1974 in Johannesburg, South Africa, Steve's dad, a professional soccer player, moved the family when Steve was 18 months old, selling them in Victoria, British Columbia. In elementary school, Steve, always very competitive and smart, excelled at chess, winning several school tournaments. A fellow chess competitor, Marshall Smith, recalls Steve's strategic approach to the game. Steve could see the whole chessboard, anticipating my moves and planning his own well in advance. He had a sequence of moves with his pawn and his knight that was just like a pick and roll. I guess he was born to play point guard. Though Steve and his little brother Martin grew up mostly playing soccer and hockey, once Steve started playing competitive basketball in the eighth grade, he announced to his mother that one day he would make it to the NBA. Vertically challenged by the NBA standards, Steve idolized Detroit Pistons point guard Isaiah Thomas for his creativity on the court and ability to play the game on the floor rather than above the rim. As a senior in high school, Steve led the St. Michael's University School Blue Jaguars to the Provincial Championship title, averaging 21.3 points and 11.2 assists per game. That same year, 1992, he was named the Province's Player of the Year. Despite being the worst defensive player Dick Davies, Santa Clara University's basketball coach, had ever seen, he offered Steve a full basketball scholarship. Over 20 years later, Steve is preparing for his 17th NBA season, this time as the floor general for the 2012-2013 Los Angeles Lakers. Beware, NBA. This could be checkmate.